Hi everyone, I'm Alice, the social media manager for Jubilance, and today I'm talking with Jewel Bejavarapu. Jewel is a life coach and CEO of her business, Simply Jewel Intercultural Life Coaching, where she coaches globally minded women who feel unsupported or isolated, feel confident and worthy in their relationships. Jewel's passion for becoming a global citizen herself led her to live abroad in Costa Rica. She's also traveled to India, Iceland, Trinidad, Nicaragua, Europe, Mexico, Peru, and will be living as a digital nomad with her husband for four months around Southeast Asia starting in December. Um, she draws upon her personal experience of being in many intercultural relationships and in an intercultural marriage to her husband who is Indian. She knows what it takes to break the status quo. She coaches women to build a multicultural identity and bridge cultural gaps in their intercultural relationships and lives. Her goal is to empower women to expand their identities, learn that there is not one right way of thinking or being, and believe they are enough. Jewel holds her BA in Anthropology, Environmental Studies, and Spanish, as well as her Master of Science in Education in Bilingual Education. This multicultural high achiever is talking to us today about cultural differences we see in America, her life abroad and here, and her entrepreneurial business. So welcome, Jewel. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. Can't wait. <laughs> We're so excited to have you on. Um, we just want to start with some fun questions to, like, um, to get to know you a little bit more. Um, okay, chocolate or cheese? Chocolate, 100%. Ooh, chocolate. why? <laughs> I eat chocolate, like one piece of chocolate after lunch every day. Wow. Like organic chocolate, like one piece. That's my sweet for the day. Wow, that's great. I wish I had that self-control. <laughs> yeah, I actually learned it in part of a, like a diet to help menstrual pain and PMS, and they were like, We'll get a little sweet in, just not too much. So I'm, oh. like, okay, I'm doing it. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay, TV or a movie? Probably TV. Um, yeah, I like TV series. They're fun. I watched The Handmaid's Tale, and I totally binged watched at that. It's so good. I could not stop. I know I'm feeling, but great. Yeah, terrifying. I was like, had nightmares. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was scary. But it was so good and so like, oh boy, like this does so much. So I loved it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, tampon or pad? I actually use a diva cup and like thinks underwear. Oh, cool. How do you how do you like the underwear? I I love it. I'm never going back. It's huh. comfortable, absorbent, like I, I wouldn't wear it like just alone personally. Um, so that's why I use the Diva Cup. But um, as far as like having like something extra there, it's like it's perfect. Huh. Oh, that's really good. Wearing a diaper. That's what I hate about that. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, so you're living in Florida now. Um, where, where are you living there? So I'm in Tampa, um, and we moved there for my husband's job. So. Oh, great. Um, what's your favorite thing about Tampa? It's the weather. 100%. It's like hot, humid, sunny. <laughs> I could not ask for more. That's awesome. Are you at Disneyland all the time? <laughs> I've actually only been to Disneyland once, and that was when I was in like eighth grade. No, but you live right there. <laughs> you know, I'm not a, I'm not a big roller coaster like rides person. Okay. So you would think like living in Florida, you're at Disneyland, or like living in Florida, you're at the beach all the time. But it's kind of like when you live in some place, you don't really like go and do the sights. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so, that was like my dream, and I was like, when I was like, oh, we're gonna move to Florida. I'm gonna be at the beach every day. It's like hasn't happened, but okay. it's okay. <laughs> that works too. You get the, you get the wonderful weather, so that's great. Exactly. Yeah. Do you have a favorite restaurant there? Um, so I love this place called Dats, and it has like really good burgers, really good fries, just like everything's really good. Huh. And then next to Dats, there's a shop called Dough, which they also own, and it has donuts. And they uh -huh. even have like a burger where it's like donut, burger, donut, which is obviously my favorite. That sounds awesome. 
Yeah. Like, to, what, could, what could be better? Donuts and burgers. Done. Yeah, really. <laughs> American dream right there. <laughs> exactly. Oh, boy. Yeah. So I know you don't have, like, the typical changing seasons, but do you guys have fall traditions that you do nonetheless? Um, I could go to Starbucks and drink pumpkin spice lattes that are iced. <laughs> I don't know if that counts as a fall tradition. Yeah, that's I great. <laughs> I think that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, they do have, like, pumpkins and hay rides in Florida, but, like, I grew up in New Hampshire, so, like, I don't do that stuff down here because it just doesn't seem, like, realistic. I'm kind of just, like, fake. <laughs> I'm do about it. Gotcha. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and can you talk a little bit more about that? So you said you grew up in New Hampshire and you kind of lived all over the world. So what brought you to like living in Florida? And then also like, what has brought you all of these places? Yes. So I mostly grew up in New Hampshire, kind of in New England in general. I was born in Boston. We lived in multiple different houses. I think I've moved 20 times in my life. Wow. So it's, it's a lot. Um, I lived in England for like five months when I was in eighth grade. Um, and then I went to college in a small town near St. Louis, Missouri. So I did that for four years. And then after college, I moved to Costa Rica for two years. I taught English and second grade at a bilingual private school there. That's and now, amazing. then New York City and now Florida. I was like, I have to get back to Florida somehow. <laughs> Wow, that that's amazing. And yeah. you also you were also in Nicaragua for some time as well, yes. right? Yes, I was. So I was uh, so I went abroad in college to Costa Rica and Nicaragua for a semester. Um oh. this group called CEL, Center for Geological Living and Learning. Hmm. So I was a, like a sustainability environmental studies major in college. So we went down there and like studied sustainability and lived in host families the entire time, um, which was ama- which was an amazing experience. I like I feel like I really learned like it taught me so much about myself because when you're living in another culture, you have to like really examine like your own values and your own belief systems and it really puts you out and doesn't let you just be like, oh, this is what I believe and you know, done. So I guess I really questioned the thoughts that I had and like why I was thinking that way and really realized like my own thinking is totally culturally subjective Mm. and that like for example you know the families I was living with didn't have too many creature comforts like in Nicaragua I stayed with family for a week and we didn't have running water um we cooked with a solar oven um and so they didn't have these things that I was used to having that I take for granted living in the United States but they were like so much less stressed and so much happier than I was (laughs) Uh, I was like, why is this? Wow. Like my 20 year old self was like, how does this work? I thought happy all these things and then you were happy, then you weren't stressed. And I realized it was because they weren't thinking like, oh, I have to arrive at this place. I don't have to, I don't know. And they, have, they didn't have to say it. They felt like they didn't have to like arrive at this place of like, okay, when I do this, I'll be happier. When I do this, I'll be successful. They were just totally living in the present, um, just being like really content, happy with the life that they had. Wow. Um, and can you talk about how like this, this trip abroad kind of spurred, um, what you're doing now and how did, how did you even get to intercultural, um, life coaching and what is it? Yes. So this whole trip abroad really kind of opened my eyes to that people have a different life experience and different perspectives and that's okay. Like, it's good to have different perspectives. It really broadens you out. I think I learned more about myself in those three months during my abroad than my entire life. Um, wow. I questioned everything. I asked why. I saw people doing things differently and realized, that's okay. I can do this way. They can do it that way. Great. And learn so much. And so I think that realization and that, like, love of, like, immersing myself in a different culture surrounding myself with people who think differently than I do, who don't have the same experiences, really opened my eyes to like what life could be like and kind of seeing, okay, I don't have to follow this traditional path of like, go to college, get a career, get married, have a house, like, (laughs) pay my job forever. Like, all that kind of like middle class, like traditional things that you follow, I realized I don't have to do that if I don't want to. I have to do something else. 
or I could do that. And it didn't really matter, but just seeing like there were options that people live differently. And so I think that really spurred my love for other cultures and my love for other languages. And I, I went back after college, I graduated and two weeks later, I packed up my bags, best friend in tow. And she stayed six months, but I ended up staying two years. Um, teaching English and living abroad because you, you can't teach what you don't know. You can't advocate what you don't know about. So that was really my immersing myself. And so I learned how to live in another place and like kind of proved it to myself. Wow. That, that's amazing. And, yeah. and, and what happened after that? Um, I read on your bio that you came back and you were a teacher and what spurred you to leave that? Yeah, so after teaching for like a year, not having any experience or degree teaching, I thought maybe I should get some experience. Maybe I should get a degree. Maybe I should figure out how you actually really do this since I've been like faking it until I made it, which totally <laughs> I loved it. Um, so I came, I moved to New York City um, and to go to Bank Street College of Graduate Education, um, which is one of the best bilingual programs in the nation. And studied bilingual education there. So my master's was half in Spanish and half in English. Wow. And I student taught up in Harlem. I worked in the South Bronx. I worked on down at a private school, an international private school on Wall Street, um, another private school in Brooklyn. So I worked kind of all over the city and just got to experience that. Um, and then after graduating from then, I moved to Miami with my husband and um, just kind of like burnt out on teaching. Mm. And so that's when I realized that I wasn't following my path of the intercultural love of globalization, love of like different cultures, really. Um, and so I kind of was figuring out like, how can I help other people and, you know, share what I've learned? What am I good at? And I'm really good at like immersing myself in different cultures and fitting in when I need to fit in, but also retaining my own self identity. Huh. I realized that was something a lot of people struggle with and I could share. And I could help other people, you know, manage their thoughts, manage their minds when they're going through this really you know, challenging experience of transitioning to a new culture, or changing a new career, or, you know, developing their identity or realizing their self-worth. So that's kind of how life coaching was born. And specifically huh. intercultural life coaching, just because I, I'm an intercultural marriage, you know, it's really important to me. Diversity and multiculturalism is important to me. So I coach other women who have similar values. Hmm. That's really interesting. How does, how does your coaching work? So you said you do it over Zoom? I do, I, yeah, I coach over Zoom. So I coach anywhere in the world, coach anyone in the world. It's so much fun. I love it. I spend an hour with my clients each week and you know, we, we tackle all the things, like everything. So even though I'm an intercultural life coach, I coach on dating and productivity and, and stress management and everything because it all kind of comes together in the end. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. Um, yeah. and you just started this business, right? We did. I started it in May. So I'm still wow. very new. Google has been my best friend. I Google everything. I'm like, Google, how do I market? Google, how do I work networking events? Yeah. Well, I feel like we're all doing that. Exactly. <laughs> that's great. You found us from Google. Yeah. Which is my best friend. Awesome. <laughs> Google and YouTube will tell you everything. <laughs> All of it. Yeah. Um, can you talk about some of the differences that you've seen between um, our American culture and the culture you've seen while living abroad, or maybe just like um, between you and your clients of, of what different cultural practices look like? Yeah. So I talk a lot about this in like an analogy called the cultural iceberg. So if you visualize it, there's an iceberg, or you're like, you know, paddling along in the Arctic. It's going to take you on a journey. Okay. Paddling along in the Arctic, and you see this iceberg. You see the very tip. The majority of the iceberg is underneath the water. So you can kind of think about it like culture. You go to another culture, you see just the tip, and you're there. You see oh. the festivals. You see the different clothing. You see the different language. You see the different architecture, the mannerisms, the food. So those are all the things when we think about culture, we generally think those things first. But really, when we get down and we look, you know, we're on, get out of the kayak, the snorkeling on top of the water, and you're looking and you're like, oh my gosh, there's a huge iceberg. It's all <laughs> in the water. 
And that's really what culture is is that all those things that we don't see at the top, it's like the food, the mannerisms, the clothing is a manifestation of like the belief systems, the Ugh. values, the social norms, the shared history, the way of like thinking that are just so much more complex. And so, you know, even though I lived two years in Costa Rica and like was very immersed into a culture, I actually dated someone there for two of those two years who was a Costa Rican or Tico, as we say. Um, like, you, I only was really snorkeling on top and, like, diving down and, like, holding my breath and glimpsing that culture and coming back. So it just takes such a long time to really understand a culture and the complexities and the depth that needs to get to that full iceberg. Do you ever think that you can immerse yourself fully in a culture that's not your own? Or is it, or is it about, or is your coaching about retaining your own cultural identity while um being in being in a different culture i don't know i'm i'm so curious i think it takes a long time to really fully understand a culture and i don't think you'll ever like so my husband has he, my husband's indian he's lived here for 10 years now i think it's 10. <laughs> he's lived here for 10 years and he has like a really good understanding of american culture but i still explain things to him I'm like, oh, so this, like, TV analogy, like, okay, go back to The Handmaid's Tale because everything connects. Yeah, great. <laughs> like, go back to The Handmaid's Tale and talk about, like, Puritan culture in the United States and how that traditional values in The Handmaid's Tale totally envelops Puritan culture, which is, like, such a big part of American history. And my husband did not get any of that on the show because he had no, con he didn't understand Puritan, Puritanism. Uh -huh. Just That's something that insane. growing yeah. up in school, you, you know, you learn about, or you have, you still have a kind of societal norm a little bit here and there showing up in our society based on that history of like Puritanism. Huh. So it's That's like so those like subtle, super subtle layers that like, yeah, he's been here for 10 years. He's married to me. Like I'm very American. <laughs> like, <laughs> but like, you know, you still don't quite get in the same kind of thing. Um, you know, we've been married for now a year and a half, dated for four years. Um, I've been to India once for a month so far. We talk to his family every week, but in Indian culture, we eat Indian food every day. We, you know, celebrate all the holidays, but can I tell you like the little subtle things about Indian culture? More generalized things? Yes. But the subtle things, I'm still learning. It, it will take me a while to learn since I don't live there, but yeah, I think. This takes a while, but I definitely coach, I coach, I help women really like help them see their own thinking so oh. they can kind of see their own experience better. So when you like see what your brain is doing and what your brain is thinking, having a coach to help you see that, they understand, okay, so what are, where are my judgments? How am I experiencing this? Oh. So they can kind of see themselves in an observer perspective and decide whether they like it or not. Hmm. Wow. That, that's so fascinating. Yeah. And to like, think about, um, how you can, how you can be a part of both worlds or you're almost like creating your own new culture with your husband. We totally are. We are like, even though he's like, we, I think yesterday we were even talking about it. He's like, we're American Indian. I was like, well, really? Like I'm American and you're Indian. He's like, yeah, well, if you put them together, we're American Indian. Yeah. So, but it's true. Like we are creating our whole third culture. That's totally just us and our family values and how we decide to blend in. It. It's not 50, 50. It's some things were more Indian and some things were more American. Just yeah. live in Some things weren't either. Oh yeah. That's, that's awesome. Um, and, and I'm curious too, like from, from all your traveling abroad and everything, um, a question that we ask on this podcast is what is it, mean for you like what's your definition of being a woman um and has that changed like for you specifically when you've when you've been abroad and um and seeing different cultures and i don't know it's so hard i feel like i don't know if i had a definition of being a woman mm -hmm. um definitely like a feminist i embrace equality um and really try hard to you know question my beliefs and stereotypes and values of why I think that way um but as far as abroad I just I feel like coming back from America from either in, even like Costa Rica coming back to India I see 
how like how many opportunities we have as women in America mm -hmm. and like how we still have a long way to go for sure yeah but like not to discredit like how far we've come and just seeing that and like the me too movement and you know not getting too political but like all these movements that are you know black lives matter like these all these civil rights movements really have to do with women's rights and how women's rights are everyone's rights same you know and i think that that has just been like an eye-opening experience of just how much like i've started my own business i'm working for myself like opportunity there's so much opportunity here and we keep getting more and more opportunity every day as we like continue like debunking um, <laughs> different you know stereotypes and belief systems that are outdated Mm -hmm. no needed. And I think women are doing that throughout the whole world. Like, especially right like today, even like right now, like in India, there's so many like civil rights and movements and women's movements going on. Like in Latin America, there it's just women I think are really like standing up in this generation, like the millennial generation. I think part of this because the world's getting smaller, internet. Mm -hmm. People are, you know, helping each other's movements from all over the world and supporting each other. So it's not just the United States or India or Costa Rica, it's everyone. Yeah, that's amazing. And you're making this world like a smaller place too with your coaching. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. Um, so if a woman were to walk up to you and ask you for one piece of advice and you just had like a minute to give them your best tip about whatever it may be, what would it be? So I would ask a question in life coaching. Huh. Ask a lot of questions. Great. I would ask a question that if you are already 100% worthy from just being born and you really believe that you're already worthy and you don't have to do anything to make you more worthy and you don't have to, haven't done anything in your life to make you unworthy, how does that change how you do it? Huh. So like for me, if I'm going to answer it, I thought a lot about this a couple months ago and for realized that like my life purpose and how I wanted to live my life was really just to have fun. Because if I'm already worthy, there's nothing I need to do. There's nothing that I can take my worthiness away and everything else is just icing on the cake. Like it's all just for fun. And when you can let everything just be for fun, then you have so much more power. You have so much more passion because it, in the end it doesn't really matter you're able to go out on a limb and fail and experience and try again because you're not making it mean anything about your work mm. i think that's a big one for women is worthiness that's wonderful okay. and something that i definitely need to remember too yeah that's i i don't know the answer to that question right now jewel but i i'm gonna be thinking about that tonight and think about it. It's yeah. great. Yeah. Like, think about it. It like kind of bends your mind, and you're like, and your and your brain wants to be like, I don't know, I don't know. Because or like, I'm not worthy. Like, what are you talking about? Like, exactly. I have to prove myself, but but don't like push your brain when it says I don't know, and be like, well, what if I did know? What if yeah. I am already worthy? And, like, oh. think new thoughts. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, and I, and I like your idea to just have fun with life and like what you can uncover and do. Um, which seems pretty amazing with how you've um, moved on to this new career and just made yourself an entrepreneur. Yeah. So well, teaching, I was definitely like thinking like, I have to prove myself. I have to prove that my space in the world, that my body taking up this space is doing something good and helping other people. And I need to prove myself basically to the world and prove that I'm doing good. But like, why? Like, why do I have to do that? Yeah. Oh, I got out. <laughs> and it just changed my whole mentality. If yeah. I'm feeling like anxious or worried, I'm not, it's because I'm not having fun. It's because I'm uh -huh. thinking I have, I need to be proving myself. I need to be doing something to make myself worthy. And it sounds like you have the best possible career now too, because you're doing everything that you're interested in, everything that you, you are teaching in a way. You're teaching me right now. Uh -huh. okay. But then also, like, getting to, you said you're traveling abroad to Southeast Asia for three months. Like, Oh, my gosh. We are. Oh, my gosh. Can you talk about that? Yes. Um, so we're, like, from when we first met, my husband and I were like, we want to be a digital nomads in Thailand. 
that's amazing. And I was like, no, like, yeah. I'm not <laughs> I was like, I'm a teacher. I need a steady job, steady income during the school year. We can go in the summer. <laughs> obviously, I'm not a teacher anymore. That's not my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, that's not what I'm doing. And so when that kind of transition happened, it kind of opened up so many possibilities for us. And we were like, well, what if? Like, could we? And then we decided we were going to do that. And so we're traveling to Vietnam, Cambodia, okay. Thailand, Bali, Singapore, and India for four months. And just like hopping around, working when we need to work on our work hours since the time difference and exploring. And I'm having a trip of a lifetime. Wow, that's incredible. I was just in Vietnam and Cambodia this summer. Um, and it was like amazing. I, you're gonna have the best time. I can't wait. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Like all I ever want to eat is Vietnamese food now. Like always, but <laughs> that's so exciting because I'm a little worried. I like don't typically love Asian food, but I'm like really excited because I feel like I just had not the real thing. Oh my gosh, it's so good. And Vietnamese food is so healthy and fresh and delicious. Oh my, you should take a cooking class while you're there. Um, they have some, like great cooking classes and you can kind of like learn how everything comes together. Yes, I yeah. totally will. I'll even suggest that to my husband because he's the cook in the family. Oh, okay. So, you should go take a Vietnamese cooking class and cook for me. No, so. I'm not a cook either, really. Like I, I want my boyfriend. He's like such a better cook. But, um, but it was really fun just to kind of like see how all the spices and things that you're tasting come together in that culture. Okay, I'm gonna totally do that. Thank you so much for the advice. And I feel like offline, I'll have to be like, tell me the itinerary, what yeah. did you do? <laughs> I needed it all. Yeah. <laughs> um, to like, to, en to end a little bit, um, just do you have a book that you would suggest to read like on a plane? <laughs> on a plane, so I just finished where the, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. The Kadad Kradad Singh. Oh, okay. Yeah, I heard of that. Yeah. Bestseller. It was really yeah. fun. I loved it. It was a good, oh. good read. Um, like a culture book to read is um I'm just looking at it. The Culture Map by Aaron Meyer. Huh. Super good. Totally lined me on even little things that my husband and I were doing that we had no idea that was cultural related, but it was. So definitely recommend those two. Huh, I'll have to check it out. Very cool. Um, Jewel, is there anything else you want to add? No, I think we covered everything. Thank awesome. you so much for having me. This was so much fun. It was good yeah. to be Thanks so much for being on. Um, and so everyone, you can see what Jewel is up to on her website, www.simplyjewel.com, um, and it's J-E-W-E-L-L-E. -E um, or you can check out her Instagram at Simply Jewel Coaching um, to see what she's up to. Yeah. Yes. Check it out. It's fun. I post a yeah. lot. So <laughs> you get lots of good tidbits. Perfect. Um, thank you so much for being on. Thank you, Alice. I appreciate it. Have a great day.